guys welcome to my youtube channel today i'm going to show you how i made an edible snail in modeling paste i hope you enjoy the video if you do don't forget to check out my other youtube tutorials and cake decorating videos so i'm going to start with some modeling paste now i've got a fairly pale color and i'm going to use the serotino modeling paste i'm going to link everything i've used below the video guys and you can purchase most of the products that i use within my actual website but look below for the links anyway that's fine you'll find them in there so I'd pre-made a shell like in advance anyway, and then I'm gonna weigh out a rough amount. This one's probably gonna be bigger than what it would be in my actual garden. Like the snails where I am are fairly small, so it's not quite life size. Although I wish I'd done like a giant snail. So we're starting with a bit of a ball and I've kind of pushed it up slightly at one side. I'm using a ball and tool to create a little dip. Sorry, that's my printer you can hear in the background. And the snail's body will go into there. So we're putting a little spiral on. I'm just using the side of my Dresden tool, so my modeling tool, to push in a little spiral. So I think I had about 47 grams of paste in this one. But you could go uh, with more or less, depending on if you want the snail bigger or smaller. So once you've got your spiral in, guys, just put some lines in with the Dresden tool. Just so it's a bit of texture. You play around with different tools. I've got like this, this one's called like a golf tool or something. I usually use it for putting hairlines in, but it just puts me a few lines in at a time but whatever you've got to hand, you can use. I want a similar amount of paste um, for the body as what I've used for the shells. So I've rolled the body into a slug shape. <laughs> I've sort of pinched it up with a bit of a ridge at the back, bringing it up to a bit of a peak where I'm gonna put the shell. And then on the bottom edge, I'm kind of pinching it at either side and pushing it up. So like the front part of it's gonna come up. Hopefully you can see it better from the side. I'm gonna add some lines kind of from the bottom edge upwards. Try not to make all the lines the same height. I realise my hand's quite in the way there. Sorry, guys, for you seeing. But do it all the way at the front. You don't have to curl your snail's body upwards like what I have done. And then I'm going to texture it with sort of little marks. You can do each one individually or you just kind of do crisscross patterns if you want to speed things up. Where I've got the circles, I actually had a bit of a go with a piping nozzle, like a round end piping nozzle to try that kind of texture, which probably would be quicker, but it depends what kind of patterning you want. I kind of wish I'd just gone for... um. A texture mat, like maybe like a reptile texture mat would have done it quicker, but I didn't have one to hand, so we did it this way. I'm going to just stick my shell on the ridge on the back of this snail's body. So I've just used a little bit of water there. And now for its little, now I've forgotten if they're tentacles or antennas or what they are, the eye bits on its face. I'm actually going to use wire to help me, guys. Now, you don't have to use wire. You can completely do this without wire. But because this was actually a Facebook Live that I did last week, I'm always in a little bit of a rush for the Facebook Live and I don't have time for things to necessarily set as long as they need to. So by putting the wire in, it just gave me a little bit more strength in there and I didn't have to wait for it to set. So I used just a tiny piece. We rolled it into kind of a teardrop along the wire and tried to leave a tiny bit at the very end a little bit bigger. I can push the wires straight into its head, but I have made a hole ready for where they go. And you can just attach them with a tiny bit of water or edible glue and kind of press them down a little bit with your modeling tool. But guys, you don't have to use these wires. By me using these wires, it means that actually somebody shouldn't really be eating this because they don't want to swallow one of those wires at all. But if you've got more time than me, make them in advance. Don't make them on a wire and let them set a little bit harder and then you can use them. And guys, you can do these in modeling chocolate or like a gum paste or modeling paste. You can use fondant, but you might find it's a little bit soft for these parts. So we've got two bigger ones and two smaller ones. And then what we're gonna do is color it up. Now I've got a mix of like powder colors and gel colors. So this one here, I'm using like a shadow gray. Again, what I'm gonna do is link below the video to what I've actually used, but I've diluted it with dipping solution. So you can use like clear alcohol, lemon essence. Something like that is better than water. The water um, goes a little bit sticky on it. So the dipping solution, which is pretty much um, like alcohol, but you wouldn't wanna drink it. Um, it evaporates pretty quickly, meaning my, dry, my snail's gonna dry fairly fast. But because I've got it fairly diluted, so it's not a thick paint that I'm using, and it's food coloring, sorry, rather than paint, so it is edible, um, not like I'm gonna be eating this one. It kind of runs into, you know, all those creases and cracks that we drew in earlier at the beginning, making it look darker in those areas. And of course you could go with whatever color you want for the snail. So I've got some pictures in the background that I'm kind of using for guidance, but mine still doesn't look anything like any of the snails in the background, but it's fine. They, they, they still help me. So I'm going to go a little bit darker just around the edge of the coil. Again, I apologize, guys. I think I sometimes put the camera at a bad angle and my hand really does get in the way of what I'm doing. So I don't want to go dark 
on the shell on this one. I was a bit undecided whether to go for like a swirly shell or almost like a kind of, I don't know how to describe it. I want to say tortoise shell pattern, but that's what's on a cat, isn't it? Than a, rather than a snail's shell. <laughs> so you can just go over it as many times as you want with different layers. If it's fairly transparent, you're going to see the layer underneath each time. I've gone with a tiny bit of brown on this, this one this time. And I did add a touch of white just around the very outer edge of my snail's body. And this bit, is this bit called its foot? I'm not sure. <laughs> but because I've kept a fairly pale coloured modelling paste underneath rather than going for a dark colour to make it in, it means that when I'm painting it on, you can kind of see through. It looks a little bit transparent-ish, slightly, on its body. If I'd have gone for a really dark colour underneath, you wouldn't see any of this painting work. So that's why I went for a light colour. So I've got a second shell here because I wasn't sure which kind of pattern to go for. So this one you could do much darker if you want. This one I'm going to go for. The, I think this one was, ooh, was it chestnut brown? Now I'm going to again a link below. I'm voicing over it now. I actually made this last week in the Facebook Live. And my memory doesn't last very long. So I've kind of forgotten <laughs> what colour I used last week. It actually looks like um, caramel ivory colour that I used. I think it is caramel ivory. You can just blend it out a little bit with your brush. And this is uh, the second snail tutorial I've actually done on YouTube. I have another one that's a bit more cartoony. So if you don't want it to look ultra realistic or you're struggling with those little eye or tentacle bits or I do, put in your comments below what they're actually called because I don't know the name of these things. I should probably look it up, shouldn't I? Um, but yeah, if you struggle with them and they're a bit thin, you might want to go for something a bit more cartoony that's got kind of bigger eyes. And I do have another video for the other one that I did. I did it a little while ago. That other one was in modeling chocolate. And I'll put a link up in the corner so that you can get to that video or tutorial fairly easily. So I'm using a darker brown now to kind of paint on a little mottled effect. But you can have fun and put all kinds of patterns on. You don't have to go for something that's realistic. You know, you, you put stars and hearts or whatever you want on it. I feel now like I should make some with fancier patterns. So I've swapped from using the food colors for painting. And I've thought maybe drawing the stripes on would be easier with a pen. So this is an edible pen. Again, I'll put links to them below, but they are available in my website, on my website even. I still don't have a steady hand, so they're not very neat swirls that I've drawn on here, but they're okay. I think they will do the job. And I need to think about what kind of cake this is gonna go on. Would you guys like to see me make a cake for it to, to set on? I'm thinking maybe a toadstool kind of style, something like that. So just go over with a bit more shading anywhere that you want it to be darker. Again, keep it fairly diluted at first. I'm just going over with a little bit more food colouring, painting on this time just to darken those stripes because my pen only goes to a certain depth of brown. But you can use the edible pens instead of paints if you prefer, guys, if you find that a little bit easier. Or like me, you can use a mix of both. So there it is, all finished. So this one's the Saratino modeling paste, but don't forget you can do them in modeling chocolate and do check out my other snail video that I have made. So I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thanks so much. Bye. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.